oil is one of those that is very, very uh, crucial to be always paying attention to because you'll look at this and you'll think, okay, that's gasoline prices, that's food prices, that's everything basically because of transport. So you'll see this here. The WTI crude has come down to the level of $68.00. And that is something that has been fluctuating wildly. Will it cross back over the $70? Sure, why not, as long as there are geopolitical tensions. But it seems to me that the market has amnesia and tends to forget things very, very quickly because none of those tensions have eased whatsoever. It's just a daily thing. Just to summarize this, I want you to know that when you look at oil prices, learn how it affects everything else, how it affects your food prices, electricity, and so on. With the prices being very volatile because of all the geopolitical tensions, you need to prepare accordingly, okay? Moving on. Look at this chart here that I found where you will see how the WTI crude is matching quite accurately to what we saw here 2015 2008 okay whether it will continue on that way i don't know but it just shows us that this here could be a similar pattern now remember that price had fallen uh, considerably in that uh, period of time for no reason as far as i'm concerned whether that will happen now, I don't know. It's all about the geopolitical tensions and oil is really, really fragile in that respect, right? Because you have something like the Strait of Hormuz, which could be disrupted easily and that affects the price and that affects food prices and energy and everything else all along with that. Now, George the Enemy Soros had something to say, and I wanted to bring it to you. A surging dollar and a capital flight from emerging markets may lead another major financial crisis, according to Soros himself. The European Union is facing an imminent existential threat. Wow. All right. Everything that's happening right now with the tensions between the EU and between the US, it's, uh, according to him, bound to have a negative effect on the European economy and cause other dislocations, including a devaluing of emerging market currencies. We may be heading for another major financial crisis. This is coming at the same time you're seeing all the tensions happening in different places, whether that is Italy, whether it's Turkey, Argentina, we're looking at Brazil having their own problems right now, Venezuela, don't even get me started, looking over into Central Asia, they've got a long list of problems, and I think that's important to be looking at this on a global scale, okay, because it is really a factor today that globalization makes a big difference from you know everything that's happening for us so always keep your eyes on the news around the world don't just look at you know i know a lot of people who in for example in toronto they read the toronto star they read the toronto sun and they are getting such a limited viewpoint of the information so when i do these videos i try to cover everything even when i mention in kentucky i'm talking about the whole world and i hope you do appreciate that very much take a look at this diamonds are forever you've heard that one before well apparently they can be made by a machine too de beers the company who is responsible for keeping the diamond prices high i have heard that diamonds are in quite an abundance in places where they're mining them and so they just control the supply and keep the price high now why would they do that well Seems to me like that company wants to make some profits. Shouldn't surprise anybody. Well, De Beers is getting into the lab-created diamond business with a new line of fashion jewelry and an aggressive pricing strategy. Now, I'm not sure if they can tell the difference. I'm not sure anybody would. Maybe if you put it under the microscope, you could. Ultimately, when I look at something like this, we're not going to be able to tell what's what. But the reason I mention this is specifically that what is the value that we associate to any particular commodity or anything for that matter, whether it's a stock, whether it's a house, it's all based on perception, okay? When I look at an investment, okay, I want to buy a piece of gold. What's the gold worth? I mean, it's a lump of metal. Really, what is it worth? Well, ultimately, it's what I can buy with it, what I can exchange for it, and how it will hold value. So we've given these markets the opportunity to be able to price these things, okay? Well, they're obviously controlled and manipulated, but 
That's what's happening today. So we've decided that, okay, gold is worth 1300 US dollars. But what is it worth if you're in Venezuela today? It's worth a fortune. It's worth a fortune. So all of these things are dependent on where you live and how things, how much things cost. So don't ever look at it as priced in US dollars. Understand what can it be exchanged for? What can it purchase? How does it hold value? That goes for gold. I only use that as an example. That's for a house. What's a house worth? Is it worth $1.6 million? Well, that's what people are paying in San Francisco right now. So maybe it is. But I can go in the back and beyond areas of the United States and I can pay 100000 60000 50000 and lower for a house. Just something I wanted you to think about. Child's Lemonade stands shut down for lack of a permit. I haven't brought up this issue in quite a while. I did cover several of them. I think I might have even made an entire video about this once. But this is when you know that there is a failure and it is government. People are so subservient to their government and it is truly an embarrassment. It's an embarrassment. And I'm not afraid to say it. When people bow down, they get down on their knees. They've got carpet burn on their knees from getting down for their government. You got a problem. This is what the government does. For a lack of a permit, these two little innocent kids here are selling lemonade and people come by here and they were complaining apparently. And so they decided that they would call the police, bring them in, and they would take them away. And they literally did shut down this lemonade stand. It's happened all over the world, in fact. And this is, as far as I'm concerned, a complete travesty and it's not about the lemonade stand it's about trying to basically squash the little person that's what they do they use government as a tool corporations and individuals you know what i'm seeing anyway use government as a tool and that's the failure that's why we should shrink the power of government that it has that's all for this video if you found it informative please give me a thumbs up last but not least if you found the video informative i know you will find my books the money gps and my newer release global economic collapse even more informative you can actually flip through these books all you need to do is go over to amazon there are links in the description of this video it's going to take you over there you can flip through the pages of the book for yourself take care